This is a blueprint of Shinjuku Station, the busiest public transportation hub in the world. This structure stretches one kilometer through the Shinjuku district and facilitates 3.6 million daily commuters who utilize it to go to different parts of Tokyo. On its five main levels, you'll find one of three major means of traveling. For those on the go, Shinjuku boasts three subway lines that connect it to sister districts like Shibuya, Minato, and Shiyura, all within minutes. Those using trains have their pick of five different railway companies that arrive and depart simultaneously, located throughout the station's 20 different platforms. If you're looking to travel long distances though, Shinjuku's impressive bus terminal hosts 1600 long distance travel lines that connect commuters to Tokyo and Greater Japan. It's a shining beacon of Tokyo's envious and ambitious infrastructure design and what's crazier is the fact that this same formula is repeated throughout the megacity in different districts, all interconnected in an urban design that's unmatched and quite frankly a masterpiece. Tokyo is not just a city, it's a nation within a city. The population measures 37 million people, meaning it's the biggest megacity in the world. And when you consider the tourists and visitors from other parts of Japan, the numbers are even higher. Tokyo has 50% more people than any other urban setting globally. But despite the high population and never-ending movement, it has often been known as one of the safest cities in terms of infrastructure. City planners have not only found a way to make sure that the 3.9 billion yearly users who depend on the subway system get to where they need to go, but that they and others have alternative means of traveling through Tokyo on any given day. If you're walking, for example, each Tokyo district has what you need right around the corner. If not for a grocery store, there's tons of vending machines waiting for you. Even those on bikes, which make up 14% of all transportation in the city, have found a way to deal with the admittedly imperfect biking infrastructure. But while walking is convenient and an entirely viable option, 57% of travel in Tokyo is done through public transit, which can be compared to New York City's 58%, but that's where the comparisons end. Take a look at this 3D rendering of the Times Square 42nd Street subway station. It's no Shinjuku, but it's part of a public transport system that is quite shockingly bigger than Tokyo's. Seriously, the New York City subway has 34 lines and 468 stations, all servicing four boroughs, namely Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. But bigger doesn't always mean better, and that's definitely the case here. Because despite its size, it comes second to Tokyo's annual passenger frequency. This is possible because Tokyo's system, while much smaller, is way more efficient. It's the result of a necessity that grew over time as people flocked to the big city and space decreased. The flexibility and constant work on each transport system and the insane $200 billion annual budget for Japanese public construction from 2013 to 2023, which is 40% of their entire GDP by the way, make Tokyo a brilliantly built city. But it didn't get there overnight. After the end of World War II, Japan, like many other countries, had to rebuild its nation. However, Japan didn't have access to oil reserves and expensive auto transport systems, which led to the auto boom in countries like the United States. So the Japanese government, in collaboration with private companies, invested in railway lines instead in an attempt to connect Tokyo's more suburban areas with the city center. Combine this with the historically lower income of Japanese households and the demand for solid public transit grew. This completely left the car as a means of transport in the dust. Hence, it's no wonder the average car ownership per household in Tokyo is 0.56, which is shockingly low for a developed urban area, in comparison to a city like Chicago that has a car ownership rate of 1.12 per household. Betting on public transport was a risky move that paid off for Tokyo, as it's one of the few examples of a system that is practical and profitable. I know, you're probably thinking the same thing as me. Public transport and profit are words that don't ever appear in the same sentence. But in the case of Tokyo, they do. And to achieve this, Tokyo city planners, collaborating with private builders and the government, made the idea of using cars and taxis to get around the city as unattractive as they possibly could get away with. With. Just look at Tokyo's traffic. It's a nightmare that can pretty much only be compared to the long hours spent navigating LA's infamous road congestion. Although Tokyo is worse for a very simple reason. Take a look at the Shuto Expressway of Greater Tokyo. The winding and overlapping roads mimic the US's interstate highways. 
If you travel greater distances though, it requires expressway passes that could cost you as much as 14,000 yen or $120 for specific areas over a one to two week period. It might sound ridiculous, but it helps public support for transit systems. It makes it so there's no competition when comparing cars with the subway, bus or train. And that's a good thing, because public transit in Tokyo is objectively the superior option to a car-based city. Even if one did want to make a swing at using a car to get around, they better have a lot of free time, because a train or subway will get you to your destination much faster than a car will. As transit vehicles run on a strict time crunch, operating within a minute of expected arrival or departure time. They're also super fast, moving at one and a half times the speed of a car that's limited by speed restrictions, traffic and unpredictable roadblocks. So yeah, public transit is the way to go and passengers only need one car to travel across Tokyo, the PASMO card. Which might sound like it should go without saying, but before the 2000s, people would have to line up in huge crowds to buy tickets from different train and subway companies. And the PASMO car collaboration has solved this issue, while also leading to a shared railway system that has only unified Tokyo's great infrastructure further. Now, you might be thinking that Tokyo's subway and rail systems are simply too technologically advanced to be compared to cities like New York. But what Japan is doing is pretty basic. It's not alien technology, it's just common sense. I mean, look at this train from a terminal in Minato, Tokyo, coupled with this one in Chicago. Or what about this subway in Shinjuku paired against this one in New York? They look alike. The difference lies in what they are connected to, as well as the maintenance that these systems are taken through daily. You see, most of Tokyo stations are empty through the night, even the one in Shinjuku, which makes it the perfect time to do the mandatory nightly inspection. Yep, you have me right, the subway tunnels and tracks are checked every night. Minor damages are fixed, while major ones are reported and alternative routes are chosen. But Tokyo goes even further than this, by doing a thorough dismantling and inspection of all their train cars every four years. The cars are stripped down by hand and all parts are tested for malfunction before they're cleaned and put back together. It's a highly coordinated effort that ensures accidents along these stations, tunnels and railways are kept to a minimum, and unforeseen damages that cause down times are therefore virtually non-existent. Oh, and let me just quickly mention the Shinkansen, Tokyo's bullet train, that has a maximum operating speed of 320 km per hour, making trips out of Tokyo a breeze. A commuter could board a Shinkansen in Tokyo and arrive at the Shin Amori station in northern Japan in just 3 hours and 20 minutes. The same can't be said for Amtrak's Akila train, which is currently the fastest train in the United States. And it does the same distance of 713 kilometers from Boston to Washington in 7 hours. So all in all, Tokyo is really well designed and connected in an efficient way. And while it can look chaotic sometimes from an outside perspective, like when you watch videos of the crosswalks, it's really the exact opposite. Everything is well thought out down to the smallest of details and everything seems so coordinated. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.